So that's metaphor number one, wrestling hand-to-hand -hand combat. This month I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. I am well aware that Anheuser-Busch donates to Republicans and has Republican executives and a largely conservative customer base. That's exactly why we should boycott them, okay? It makes their endorsement of gender ideology all the more outrageous and it makes them all the more vulnerable to our pushback against that marketing decision. This metaphor is not a metaphor for wrestling. This is a metaphor for combat. Mr. Beast is stuck between a rock and a hard place because if he doesn't put this guy on the air and destroy the dynamic of a show or at least harm the dynamic of a show, then that means that he's a transphobe. But if he leaves the guy on the air, it completely messes up the dynamic of the show and fewer people are going to watch it. And you can see that in the number of dislikes that have been racking up on Mr. Beast's YouTube page. So Mr. Beast, had to make the choice. And so the choice that he chose is, of course, the wokest choice. He tweeted out, yeah, this is getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare. He's my bleeping friend and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. Okay, that's that's Mr. Beast's choice. But you also have a choice, which is whether you actually wish to watch Mr. Beast's videos, right? Or whether you want your kids to watch. This metaphor is the uniform of a Roman soldier. A centurion. All the way down to the sword. So if you don't like combat language, you got a problem with God. Well, I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. My, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what, is, what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. Now she's taking personal leave or whatever they call it. She's on like admin leave or she's, she's taking a, a, a leave of absence. That's what it's called. Uh, so pretty much what it is, you're voluntold. See, people that don't know nothing about the business industry is that a lot of these people don't take, um, you know, voluntary leave or they quit and none of this stuff. They're voluntold. They're pushed out of the company. As Christians, we are called to proclaim the gospel, and part of the gospel mandate is to take dominion over God's creation and to influence all of creation for the glory of God, including the culture. This is why it's important to boldly fight for truth in a culture that continues to express hatred towards God's moral law. Bud Light recently experienced the consequences of alienating a large number of people with its endorsement of gender ideology. What does it matter? I don't, I don't really get it. The video, as you showed, was just a fun time with Bud Light, but some people taking it taking it a little hard. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And Mr. Beast has already started to experience the consequences of embracing gender ideology as well. Many Christians are opposed to fighting back against evil ideologies in this kind of forceful way. Because one of the things that people think about apologetics and about this war language is that it stands in opposition to things like mercy, peace, and love that we're supposed to be defined by. Right. Many Christian leaders and pastors today are more concerned about pleasing the cultural elites than about standing firm in proclaiming clear biblical truth. Well, you know, I think I have an important voice, but I'm very, I think I've been good. I think part of my, if you want to call it success, is I've stayed in my lane and my lane is lifting people's spirits and there, there are issues that good Bible believing people. And I know the verses, I know the clobber passages, right? We gotta figure this out. And you know what? I think you are. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. But the Bible is clear that Christians and the rest of the world are in direct opposition with one another and that there is a battle that must be fought. Epagonizomai. I don't think we need to be running around throwing Greek terms everywhere, but that one just... I just love saying it. Epagonizomai. It, it literally means to wrestle, to engage in hand to hand combat. Do you doubt the numbers they're putting out? Uh, yeah, I actually do. I, I think they're having trouble in the state of California. The governor just declared that he was firing the state health director because the system, the computer system, had miscounted all kinds of things. So the whole state is in an uproar. And reality would tell us this, that the world is hostile against the Church of Jesus Christ. 
particularly those that are faithful in proclaiming his gospel. Jesus said, if they hated me, they, they'll hate you. That's just how it is. Is it really true that it is unloving, even unchristian, to engage forcefully with the culture, to boldly declare that the things the culture celebrates are sinful and evil? Of course not. In fact, it's actually more loving to speak the truth in love than to withhold the truth from lost sinners in the name of love. So verse 2, he wants mercy, peace, and love to be multiplied to you. And in verse 3, he wants you to go hand to hand in combat, which means that there is no contradiction between being a loving Christian and engaging in the combat of apologetics. Yeah, you're not a Christian. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You deny God's word. You believe that our ancestors were fish, and yet you say Christ is your savior? Yes, because I believe in evolution. And I believe so you don't believe the Bible. You don't believe Jesus, his word. You don't believe that his word should be the standard. Do you, do you follow Christ? He said you should not murder. What's this? Oh, come on. That's not murder. It's the unjustified taking of human life. That's an image bearer of God. look at you and he would hate you. Okay. How do you know Christ's message? You hate Where did you get Christ's message from? And I go to church and I pray to God. Where, where did you get Christ's message? Where did you find it? I found it in my parents. I found it in my community. I didn't listen to hateful bigots like you all. Say that wasn't very nice. You said we're being, you said we're being, you said we're being unloving, but you've been insulting the whole time. I am not. Tolerant so who's being loving? Who's being loving? I'm loving to lots of other people. You're the one that are tra that's trying to force trauma on children, on girls. No, you are. You're saying kill women. the children. The truth is that the Bible is filled with language about Christians being in a spiritual war. And the Bible is very clear that Christians teach things that the culture will hate and even respond with violence to. Now verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. There we go again with war language. So, personal hand-to-hand -hand combat language. Well, chaos breaking out in downtown Chicago on Saturday night as hundreds of young people crowded the streets. And the video coming from this shocking, showing massive groups jumping on cars, causing tourists to flee the sound of gunfire. Loot because they, that's how they can eat? The real answer is, how do we make sure, the question is, how do we make sure that people can eat? Look, no one is going to condone, um, you know, behavior that, that, quite frankly, speaks to a level of desperation. Although Christians are oftentimes physically attacked, the kind of warfare that Christians are engaged in is not physical, but rather spiritual. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual in nature. They are powerful truths of God's revealed word. And whether we like it or not, this battle is already raging all around us. The question is, will we fight against evil or will we ignore or even join it? But here, and also in Ephesians chapter 6, there is no doubt, but he's talking about combat. He's talking about combat. And I believe that we, I'm not going to say must engage in combat over these issues, because I believe we are engaged in combat over these issues. My name is Leah Thomas. I'm a transgender woman, a Whoa. former college swimmer, and the first trans athlete to be named Division I NCAA champion. That's why it breaks my heart to see trans kids across the country lose out on these opportunities. No matter how much we try to soften what the Bible teaches, the world will inevitably hate the truths of the Bible because the world loves its sin and hates God's righteousness. There is a war being waged, and it is a war being waged against us. A war being waged against the gospel. But they do not have the right to dictate my life and what I decide to do with my body. I don't care about your religion. Our battle is not against particular people but against the ideologies that they represent. We recognize that apart from God's grace, we are capable of just as much evil as anyone else, and that God has the ability to save and transform even the vilest of sinners. We're not at war with people. Amen, somebody. We're not at war with people.
I'm not at war with, with, with Robin D'Angelo or Ibram Kendi. I'm not at war with, with Christians who have adopted their ideology. I'm not at war with those people. I'm at war with those ideas that stand in opposition to the truth of the gospel. Unfortunately, even many Christian leaders and pastors are unwilling to proclaim truths that the culture finds offensive. There's no doubt but that God calls us to engage in this combat, but the adversary has sneaked in and has been so slick that he has made Christians have an aversion to the very combat that we're called to engage in. Listen to Rick Warren affirm that homosexuality is sin, yet also say that homosexuals can go to heaven without mentioning repentance at all. Are gay people going to hell? No, not because they're gay. Everybody, we go to hell because we choose to reject the grace of God. The so, only way you can go so to hell is if, you reject the If a gay reject, person accepts, accepts Christ. Jesus Christ, he's going to heaven. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair enough. Joel Osteen does the exact same thing. Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Well, I believe they will. Mm -hmm. But God calls us to proclaim the whole truth. And the Bible also teaches that although obedience to God never saves a person, a person who truly has faith in Jesus Christ will inevitably submit to all that the Bible teaches and turn away from the sins that Scripture condemns. How is it that so many people today profess to have had an encounter with Jesus Christ and yet they are not permanently changed? God calls us to do something and the enemy has caused us to think that that thing we're called to do is actually evil. Do you see that? That's sinister, and that's where we are. A perfect example of this is President Joe Biden calling it sinful to want to protect children from the evils of gender ideology. Uh, transgender kids is a really harder day thing. What's going on in Florida is, as my mother would say, close to sinful. I mean, it's just terrible what they're doing. So Christians, as we continue to fight these battles in the name of Jesus Christ, Let's remember to be both loving and truthful. And let's not make the gospel any more offensive to the culture than it naturally is. But we also need to keep it in mind on the other side, because there's a ditch on both sides of the road. On the one side of the road, there's the person who doesn't keep this in mind. They're loath to engage in the combat of apologetics. And on the other hand, there's the person that doesn't keep this in mind, and they love engaging in the combat of apologetics, but they make it personal. They're mean, nasty, obnoxious, right? The gospel is offensive enough. It doesn't need your help. Amen, somebody. And Christians, let us have utmost confidence that we are not fighting this battle by our own feeble power, but by the infinite sovereign power of God himself. Keeping this in mind means that we will be forever mindful of the fact that we're not calling upon our own abilities, but we're calling upon God himself. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos and want to help support this channel, the best way to do it is to just watch these videos until the end and click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement.